I remember not so long ago men stood still with hand on heart, and I was solemnly gazed upon before the game would start. But now is it a foolish thing to celebrate what I stand for, to honor from where I've come, and to remember why I soar? Perhaps you've just forgotten what together we've been through. If you'll allow me just a moment, I'd like to reminisce with you. You see, I was forged in valor, from sea to shining sea. Our brave young men and women pledged their lives so gallantly. I was there at Yorktown when we were certain to be beat, but Washington would not back down and suffer the defeat. And I was there at Gettysburg, and I heard the brilliant words he spoke. And I gently draped his casket when at last we'd broken slavery's yoke. I survived the infamy that rained down on Harbor Pearl, and I thwarted Hitler's evil plot before it fully could unfurl. And when World War II was over, 400,000 Americans dead, we celebrated our victory and paraded blue, white, and red. Now when I came home from Vietnam, there were a heartless savage few who spit and stomped and lit me up to espouse their points of view. And I was there on 9-11 from atop a lofty height, and I unraveled at the seams that day as I pondered our nation's plight. I saw the towers crumble shortly after the attack, but I admired our resolve and the way that we fought back. You see, we've been through a lot, my friend, and we'll no doubt be through much more. So when you look at me, please, please remember those that came before. Since I was born, more than a million souls have died to keep our nation free. Did you know that you can honor them by choosing now to honor me?
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen. Oh, just checking to see if you've been to church recently. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's continue on. The Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your old men shall dream dreams. You shall know that the Lord is in the midst of his people. That he is the Lord, there is none else. And it shall come to pass. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We're going to pray two collects today. We're going to give thanks for the men and women who have given up their lives that we might have liberty. O King and Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our armed forces who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and will gladly accept its disciplines. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated to attend to God's holy word. A reading from the book of Acts. Se les aparecieron entonces unas lenguas como de fuego, que se repartieron y se pasó, posaron sobre cada uno de ellos. Amén, amén. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were seated. Excuse me, where they were sitting. <clears throat> and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it they w- that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. La palabra del Señor. 
Demos gracias a Dios. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is from Psalm 104. Please respond by half verse. <clears throat> o Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living things both small and great. There go the ships and, and the Leviathan, which you form to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him. For I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whoever, uh, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. You know, I'm going to leave my miter on because we need to talk about that because Ken and Herb talked about that last week, so we need to pull that into the sermon, too. So we're going to kind of move on what some, what some of Father Herb said last week, uh, and we're going to expand on that because this is a great day today. Amen? This is Pentecost Day, and we celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit to each of us so that we can help the Lord accomplish his, his purposes on the earth. Amen? So on that day, on that day, 
they were gathered in the upper room. The upper room is still there. The upper room um, was quickly uh, changed into a, a messianic synagogue. And so it has been celebrated from that day until now. It's, now it's called the Tomb of David, and there is a Jewish synagogue in there. And, of course, when you go to Israel, you're not supposed to go in there because you don't want to bother the Jewish people in the synagogue, right? But there in that same room, that upper room, um, it's still there. It's still there because the things that we read about in the Bible happened. God came down, and God did work. Because that's who God is. God is on his holy mountain doing stuff today, just like he did 2,000 years ago when he sent the Holy Spirit. Now, I used to read this account in Acts chapter 2, and, and it, said, it, it says like a mighty sound came. And, and, and I'm, I'm looking at that at the perspective of the, of the apostles gathered in that room with the, with the people that are there praying and waiting for the Holy Spirit. And so when the Holy Spirit comes, like the shutters move, you know, and, and, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit comes. Now, but that's not what the Scriptures say. The Scriptures say there was a sound like a mighty wind. So I'm telling you that there is a tornado, a tornado thing happening in Jerusalem, like a train, like a big boy going through, you know, 4884. I mean, think of the biggest possible train possible is going through Jerusalem. That's why the people are going to come out. Everybody in Jerusalem hears this sound, the sound of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And it's not just the 12 when the shutters move. Oh, oh, the Holy Spirit's here right now. The people come out into the streets and they say, whoa, a 747 just went through. What is going on? Okay. And the apostles come down and they have little pointy hats on. No. The apostles come down and they have what looks like fire, some kind of fire over their head, some kind of presence of God, kind of like the, the, the bush that Moses go to, where there's a fire, but it doesn't burn, okay? That's called a theophany. In other words, God shows up when we're not expecting it, and something changes, okay? And so that's what's going on. We've represented that by the mitre that the bishop wears, okay? Um, and that's to remind us that each of us has the Holy Spirit inside. Amen? Amen. So it's not just the bishop that has the Holy Spirit, although some bishops are young, handsome, highly intelligent, great structure, stand taller here, okay? No, all Christians have the Holy Spirit and are directed by the Lord right now. Amen? So, so, so it's not a matter of coming in and dusting off my old seat and listening to Ken and Herb wax poetic on Sunday, and then we can say, oh, well, we did that, so we can go home now and do whatever we want to do. No! No, he's here to help plug us in once again, to the power of the Holy Spirit and remind us that we're all working. Now, I'm going to take the flame off. Amen. So you all know that I have the Holy Spirit and you have the Holy Spirit too. Amen? Okay. Now, in the icon, the traditional icon, I don't know if you remember what the traditional icon of Pentecost looks like, but usually it is of the 12 apostles Sitting in a semicircle, there's usually a gap. Um, later on, that gap will be will be filled by the Virgin Mary, but she's not in the original icon of Pentecost Sunday. 
Now, they, they do put the Virgin Mary in there because she is part of this too. She's in the upper room waiting for, the, waiting for, waiting on the Lord to send the Holy Spirit okay, to his people so that his works can continue in the world. And what do we see above those six, uh, six on either side, apostles, 12 apostles, and the Virgin Mary when she pops in? Okay, what do we see? Little teeny flames above their heads. They are now full of the Holy Spirit. Now, the question, then, the, then our eyes move to the bottom of this icon. And there's a king at the bottom of the icon. And he is carrying something. What does that represent? Well, he represents the Gentiles. Okay? And the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon the group in the upper room so that they can begin a movement that begins that day in Jerusalem that will extend to even the Gentiles. This is not just a Jewish thing going on. This is the whole thing. Because God is king of the world. God is king of the universe. Amen? He's not just king of, like, Mount Zion. Okay? He's not just king of Israel. He's not just king of the Middle East. He's the king of the universe. Amen? How many of you saw the coronation of King Charles? Did you all see that? You will, would have noticed that you can't coronate the king without a bishop present. Now, we don't read that in Scripture, but I'm sure there's a good bishop, one or two, in there that's there when the king is crowned. Praise the Lord! We'll see what happens. <laughs> now, the, the king of the Gentiles is there. That is the purpose for the day of Pentecost and the spirit falling on the people in the upper room. And that king is carrying something. Well, I believe that's a fulfillment of Revelation 21, maybe 22b in there or something that says... The kings of the nations will bring their gifts into Zion. And I think that the king down there is really carrying a dessert. A chocolate brioche. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Why? Because our heavenly father longs to feast with us in his special place, in his city, on Mount Zion. All right? And he's expecting to have a feast. And if you're going to have a feast, you're not going to do that without chocolate. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And, and God spread us out all over the world so that there wouldn't just be one or two desserts at this feast. That wouldn't be a big feast. There's going to be Thousands of desserts. Amen? Oh, yes. So this king of the Gentiles is bringing dessert into Zion. Amen. Now, that's one interpretation. One interpretation. Praise the Lord. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful interpretation because God wants us to join him in the feast. Like, like the father in Luke chapter 15 he longs to have a feast with his family, with those who maybe have gone off to a, a different country and are ready to repent, as well as with those who have stayed behind and are kind of grumping, grumping, because they can't remember the last time they had a feast. So we have grumpy people, we have people who've gone off the way, but God is inviting us to come back and feast with him. Amen? Amen? And, of course, we know what will be at the feast. Amen. Now, interestingly, liturgically, on days that we celebrate the Holy Spirit, what color do we use? Red. Um, 
And so that red represents the Holy Spirit being poured out. And so, naturally, I'm in red. I'm in Bolivian red today uh, because my sweet wife made these vestments more than 20 years ago. Um, they're wool from the, from the little bababas in Bolivia. And so, as summer approaches, I don't usually pull this out very much because it's really hot. Um, we have all these vestments as Anglicans because we're from England where it gets pretty chilly. And the clergy wanting to stay warm in their windy cathedrals wear these cloaks and coats and cloaks and cassocks and things like that so we can stay warm. Amen? Well, I think if we have the Holy Spirit, we don't wor need to worry about staying warm. Okay? I think we will be actively responding to the Lord and serving him. Now, when you think of red, though, what else do you think of? Oh, blood. Now, we don't like to talk about blood very much. But yes, when we, when we have red on, we talk about blood. And so, red becomes the day on the calendar. The red letter day is the day of a saint that has given his life for the kingdom of God, okay? A martyr, a witness, martyrs from the Greek, meaning witness. So, so like we have St. Stephen early in the book of Acts, who is serving the Lord as a deacon and preaches the word and gets stoned, uh, in the worst sense of stoned, gets martyred, in Jerusalem, and so he has on our calendar a red letter day. Red for shedding blood. Now, it's important for us to hold those two ideas together because even though the Lord is pouring out his Spirit upon us and wants us to be full of the Spirit, he also asks us, to take up his cross and follow him. Amen? Well, we like to be full of the Spirit. We like to, to have all those, those fun gifts that the Lord talks about, gifts of miracles and uh, wonderful, fun things to do. But somehow we kind of shelve the idea that the Lord wants us to follow him in the way of the cross. And we say, well, Lord, there must be some other way to do this. There must be some other person we can send out first, right? Uh, so that we don't have to do that. We can just, well, we'll sit here and pray. No, no. The Lord requires us to set aside our own personal desires to stop following our heart because our heart is deceitful, okay? And we turn those things over to him so that we follow him. Now, the Lord, as he said, is not going to leave us. He's not going to leave us out there hanging, flying, flapping, okay? He is with us. He sends the helper to us. The Holy Spirit is the helper, advocate, and guide. Oh, but we like the word comforter, Bishop. The Holy Spirit comes to comfort our little heart. No! The Holy Spirit comes to strengthen us to do what the Lord wants us to do. Amen? And the Lord does not leave us while we're doing what he wants us to do. He comes to us in the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us in the places that we have no idea what's going on, but we know the Lord's leading us there. And so he gives us the tools when we get there so we know what to do. We're not dependent on our own thoughts, on our own wishes, on our own will. The Lord gives us the Holy Spirit so that he can live in us and live through us to transform, to transform 
lives and to transform issues and to transform this world by the power of the Spirit. Amen? But we can't do that just dusting off our own little pew. No. We need to be attentive to what God wants to do. So the red for the Holy Spirit is a wonderful thing, but he's asking us to give our lives over to him and to seek him and to obey him. The church has forgotten that part. Amen? You and I love to be comfortable. Um, you and I, even, I, we, had, we do good things every now and then, too. You know, we're, we're just not, you know. But the Lord wants us to be able to sacrifice our life, our desires, for his agenda. Amen? Now, you know, we, don't, we Americans, we don't like kings. That's for those English fellows over there. They have a king. We don't have a king. We do what we think we want to do. Okay. Um, we've stomped out those kings, but Jesus is king. Jesus can tell us what to do and where to go. Oh, my. Oh, my. What does that mean? Um, he told me, Frank, you are going to South America. Ah! I said, what? Impossible. I don't leave my little home here. I, I just don't do that. Yes, I want you to step out in faith and go to South America. Well, I said, I don't speak the language. That's okay. God said, I will be with you. I will accompany you in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to do this. Oh, no, I said, oh, my golly, I can't do that. Well, he had given me this sweet little wife who, who, who wanted to serve him as well. And, and her, uh, my petition was, Lord, I, I, I want to serve you. Help me to serve you. She had a little extra petition on there that I didn't know was there. It was like in small print. She said, Lord, I want to serve you. Just don't leave me in this country. Ah. Well, it sounded like the Lord was listening to her little petition. And so the Lord led us because of his will to work in Latin America and South America for his glory. And, and the rest is history. I didn't die. I learned lots of stuff. And there were some new desserts down there, too, oh, by the way. Tres leches. Wonderful, wonderful. Not much chocolate in that, but tres leches. This is, this is the glory of God. And so I was able to experience God's great purpose for the world, which I would not have been able to do had I been left at home in the comfy chair. Because God loved me, had called me to do that, would fill me to do that stuff. The bishop said, okay, you've studied Spanish for 18 hours. Now I'm sending you to Cuenca to be in charge of the church. I said, but bishop, I, don't, I, don't, I only know six words of Spanish. He says, that's okay. Oh, my golly. Um, I learned how to drive a stick going down the Andean Highway. It was 10 hours from Quito to Cuenca. Down the highway, 
Um, of course, I had never driven a stick before. Transmissions overseas, automatic transmissions, are technical and difficult to fix because they don't always have parts. Automatic transmissions have extra parts. So it's just much easier if you just have a plain old caja, plain old box that you're working with. I had never done that before. Now, we got to one spot in the Altiplano where it looks like Indians are sticking rocks and dirt in the road. They, they, they were calling a strike, right? So, shoot, I'm not quite sure. So, how do you stop this thing when you're, when you're doing the stick and all this kind of stuff? And I wasn't quite sure. And, of course, uh, Shawnee's over there riding shotgun. The kids are in the back seat. And I just keep sailing down the road. And uh, fortunately, they hadn't started this uh, uh, too, uh, too long before we got there. There wasn't much in the road. I just kind of hit a little bump, went sailing a little bit, you know, 60 miles an hour and stuff like that, because I couldn't quite figure out how do we stop this thing now that we're going down the road. And, uh, but we arrived safely. I'm in. The Holy Spirit was with us. It wasn't that time. If it is time, the Holy Spirit is going to be with you. He will not leave you alone. Do not be afraid. Believe in God. Believe also in me, Jesus said. He is with us. Stephen is being uh, killed there in Jerusalem. Paul is looking on. Stephen looks up, and who does he see? Who does he see? Who does Stephen see? Jesus, at the right hand of the Father. Je you know, Je Jesus was killed because he said, I will be at the right hand of the Father. So even in Stephen's martyrium, he's able to look up and he sees Jesus with him right there. There's no dark tunnels if we believe in Jesus. Amen? Okay. Jesus is with us by the power of the Holy Spirit, and he never leaves us alone. That's why he's able to say, follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Amen? Now, because we believe the Bible, people are not going to like and people don't like what God has to say. Let's just take an easy example. A day of rest. God has told us that we need a day of rest. A day to recoup. We have decided as a nation that we don't need a day of rest. We can keep the lights on and the machines moving all the time. Now God gives us these hints. More than hints, right? More than hints. He gives us these hints so that our machines will work properly. Not so that we'll be limited. Oh, my favorite restaurant isn't open today. I can't go and get food from my favorite restaurant. Well, maybe it's not that day to go to that restaurant and get special food. Maybe it's a day to concentrate on the Lord and give thanks for him and to concentrate on our family and to take some rest. Because the machine works better when we get some rest and concentrate on God, who's given us these machines in the first place. I'm talking about machines like this, folks. I'm in. I'm not talking about a Bentley. I'm talking about, you know, machines that God has given us. We say, oh, well, that takes away my liberty. No. It gives us a time to recoup so that, that we're better, so that we're oriented. Oh, God is such a meanie. I like to shop 24-7. And he's not going to let me do this. No. He wants you to focus and be quiet and rest. We, we live in the midst of depression anxiety, and suicide. And we can't rest the other six days because the machine is working too hard. 
And the brain's always thinking about something. No, sit down. Let's focus on the Lord. So, so the hints that God gives us are for our benefit. That's not because he's mean to us. Amen? Okay. There's other important hints that God gives us in his holy word. He has made us male and female. God is not Heinz 57. Okay. Amen? He's made us male and female. And for our benefit, we need to live into that. We can't change that. Each little teeny tiny cell has those same chromosomes inside. And the gray matter up here can't change on that. And our heart, no matter how much we desire that, can't change that. So we need to come into confluence with the hints that the Lord has given us. Amen? This, I'm, this is the first this is in the first few chapters. This is our great king and creator makes us this way for his purpose and not for our purpose. We cannot outthink the creator. We cannot outlive the creator. God gives us these commandments and Jesus has just asked us to walk in them so that we will have life and have it abundantly. Then he give, pours out the Holy Spirit in us to enable us to do that stuff. Amen? And he joins us today, on, on, on Sunday, on the Lord's Day, he joins us in the sacrament of Holy Communion by coming in and dwelling with us in a very materialistic way. Becoming one with us, which he does by the Spirit, but also reminding us that his food is heavenly food, his drink is heavenly drink. He coming with us to join with us. Amen? So this is what Pentecost Day is about. It's having the Holy Spirit in us to be able to accomplish what God has purposed for us. I don't think he'll send you to South America, okay? He may. Possibility. But I'm living proof that you can go to South America and come back alive. That you can go to South America and figure out what, what are the good foods to eat. That you can go to South America and drive in special traffic Buenos Aires, La Paz, Quito, uh, in a special way, and stay alive. Arrive alive. As God is with us. The Lord is with us. He's pouring out his spirit upon us so that we will glorify him. Amen? Now, I've gone a little long this morning, but can and her... Ken and Herb told me that we were going to have a nice reception so we didn't have to beat the Presbyterians to the restaurant. <laughs> Amen? Amen. The Lord loves us, and he's gone to the Father. He's gone to the Father so that as I ask the Father, he will give you another helper even the spirit of truth. We're in a battle for truth right now. We have the spirit of truth on our side, and so we just need to come unto the Lord and claim, proclaim that and live into that. Amen? Amen? He has sent us the helper to be with us forever, the spirit of truth.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to need a little bit of water for all that energetic activity, can I have? So we are going to join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us stand together and let us rehearse the faith of Christians who have believed this for all time and in every place. And we join with them. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. I'm going to ask Father Herb and Chesterton to join me at the right and left of the bishop. No, you can leave that up there, dude. Leave that up there. I'm not going to hit anybody today with the crozier. Praise the Lord. Hold this one. Okay. Yes, yes, that would be good. Okay, so the candidates may come forward with their sponsors at this time. Up everybody, praise the Lord. Can her will you present them, please? By Reverend Father and God, we proceed to the laying on of hands. Have they been adequately prepared? Dearly beloved, it is essential that those who wish to be confirmed in this church must publicly confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and King, become his disciples, know and affirm the Nicene Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and the Ten Commandments, and have received instruction in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments and the Catechism of the Church. And in the spare time... Uh, copious amounts of C.S. Lewis. Amen? God's grace is imparted in baptism, through which we are made God's children by adoption and given the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Spirit manifested in gifts and fruit, we are enabled to be God's people for the sake of the world. Now these candidates desire publicly to confess their faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and their commitment to follow him as Lord. They also desire the strengthening of grace through the laying on of hands that the Holy Spirit may fill them more and more for their ministry in the church and in the world. Candidates, do you hear in the presence of God and the church renew the solemn promises and vows made at your baptism and commit to keep them? Praise the Lord. Do you renounce the devil and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? And do you renounce the empty promises and deadly deceits of this world that corrupt 
and destroy the creatures of God. And you renounce the sinful desires of the flesh that draw you from the love of God. And you turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior and King. You joyfully receive the Christian faith as revealed in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Will you obediently keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life? Congregation, please stand. This is where the liturgy gives you exercise to do. As we take vows standing. Okay. Congregation, we, you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ. Yeah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we beseech you to strengthen these, your servants, for witness and ministry through the power of your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in them your manifold virtues of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and true godliness, and the spirit of holy fear, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, congregation. I do not want you going to sleep while I am praying with these candidates because you have work to do and you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to help you give a word of exhortation um, or encouragement to each of these candidates. Um, he may give you a special word, may give you a special word of knowledge, may give you a scripture. Um, you may see something flash into your mind and I'm going to want you later on during the reception or during the week, to share this with these candidates. Okay? Am I clear? Yes, sir. This is not necessarily the Anglican thing to do, but it's definitely the Holy Spirit thing to do. Amen? Okay, so you may be seated, congregation, and we're going to start praying for our candidates here. I think I'll give you this slide. Move closer so I can grab you. Praise the Lord. You're worried about that part, I think. Praise the Lord. Leandra, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Empower, O Lord, your servant Leandra with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen her for your ministry and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Leandra. Fight the good fight of faith under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And remember, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Are you next? Praise the Lord. Next in line. And you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. In power, O Lord your servant Anne, with your Holy Spirit, strengthen her for your ministry and service, sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. And fight the good fight of faith under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And remember, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Stand up. There we go. And Mackenzie is next. Mackenzie, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Empower, O Lord, your servant Mackenzie with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen her for your ministry and service and sustain her all the days of her life. Amen. Amen. Mackenzie, fight the good fight of faith under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Remember, not your own, you were bought with a price. Miss Rita, praise the Lord. Let me see those words for reaffirmation. Yes. Rita, the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and empower you by his grace, that you may continue in the service of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
all the days of your life. And I anoint you in the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now we have another prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand be upon these, your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your holy word, that they may faithfully serve you in this life, and joyfully dwell with you in the life to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me ask the congregation to stand, and we're going to greet our uh, vow renewers today with a with a, an exciting uh, celebration from the Lord. Let's clap our hands. Give thanks to the Lord. Praise the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share the love of the Lord with your neighbor. Amen. Thank you, God. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you. Good to be with you. Amen. Exciting day. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Well, praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Amen. Um, um, I mean, you could, if you'd like to do that, that'd be fine. So, so what's going to happen now is we need to set the table. I don't know who does that. Um, we can probably put that water back on the little, little reed table back there, so that'll be good to be out of the way. Thank you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Praise God. Peace of the Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you. Do you do announcements now? Okay. All right. Great. Well, this is a great Hispanic group. Praise God. Peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Chesterton, after you give her the peace, go get that thing off the altar. Peace of the Lord. Well, good to be with you. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. No, not that thing. The, the piece of paper thing. Yes, the letter. Thank you, guy. You're sharp. Praise the Lord. Okay, now, now, I'm sure you had an enjoyable time meeting everybody in the congregation. All right, it's time for announcements. I encourage you to have a seat. Now it's time for announcements. I like this kind of Hispanic feel where we just, like, grab everybody, and that's really good. Praise the Lord. Before... Canon Herb reads the announcements. I have a letter to read from Archbishop Foley to the Reverend Herb Hand. I should have said Canon, but that's okay. Dear Father Herb, grace and peace to you in the name of our glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I write to you on the celebration of your retirement to commend you for your faithful and dedicated leadership of God's flock in Cordova, Tennessee. That's not the Spanish pronunciation. Since the parish was formed, your love of the Lord and faithfulness to him is evident to all. You have been a tremendous leader, administrator, and pastor 
the people under your care and Bishop Frank and I are forever grateful for your fine example. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Philippians, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but in humility consider others more important than yourselves. Do not merely look after your own interests, but also the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same of Jesus Christ. That's from Philippians chapter 2. My dear brother Herb, you have exhibited this Christ-like attitude, and you will be missed in our diocese as you serve in North Africa. May God bless and anoint you for this next part of the journey he has unfolded before you. You and Mary, and we cannot not mention Miss Mary, right? Who's the rock there, helping Herb all this time. You both will remain in my thoughts and prayers. Happy retirement. In Jesus the Messiah, Archbishop Holy Beach. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Well, I may be retiring from this church, but I'm not retiring <laughs> from the Lord's <laughs> service. I'm in. <laughs> we'll be working full time in North Africa. Uh, next, next Sunday will be our last Sunday here uh, before we uh, continue on in our training and support raising. And uh, hopefully we'll be in North Africa by November. So uh, we're excited Amen. about that. So, uh, wow, that was a great, uh, very kind uh, letter. Uh, please share my appreciation with Archbishop Foley. I will. Uh, last Sunday I was sort of kidding around when um, – Lona made an announcement about bringing vegetables and things because we already had enough desserts. And I praise the Lord. The sound system wasn't working last week, and so I repeated out loud, "Please bring more desserts." I didn't realize that the arch that the bishop here is a man after my own palate. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. Um, and congratulations to those who were confirmed today and reaffirmed their faith. Uh, they spent nine weeks, uh, actually more like uh, 15 weeks altogether in study and, and uh, commitment to the Lord and really grew tremendously in their love and commitment to the Lord. So we're excited for what God is doing in you and, and your commissioning today for, for ministry and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Glenn, we have a work day coming up this Saturday. Do you have any particular announcements about that? Yeah, so just come. Great. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Great. All right. And I think Lona has an announcement. Come on down, Lona. The good thing is Chris has made the death by chocolate. Amen. <laughs> I, I think we'll have enough dessert. <laughs> we have a little bit more. So we're good. I wanted to tell everyone, please RSVP for next Sunday. We're going to be at Church of Father Herb and Mary. And we need to get you out. You don't have to bring anything, but we want that you just come and enjoy for the week. Uh, the other thing is, you'll see how beautiful the decorations, tablecloths, and everything set up very pretty. We want them to stay. We're going to use them next week. Tablecloths can be right here. So all we want you to do is take home the things that you brought. Leave them in your uh, Awana room and not take them into the kitchen. So it will be easier for all of us to do that. So don't, don't take down the chairs or tables or anything. Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll have to have two batches of the bishop's dessert. I, we will. I, I made that clear. Oh, praise uh, God. I just want to thank Lona for her service uh, overseeing our fellowship events. She, Lona is doing such a great job of giving us clear instructions and, and organizing these things. And so we really appreciate it. Because, as the bishop said, we all like 
chocolate. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Do you want to, like, have an offertory and make this an official service? We could. Okay, let's do that, Ken. Okay. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Amen. So I'm going to ask Ken and Herb to go over here and Chester to come over here. So, do you think that's enough? So when I go down, when I go down, I'm going to leave this here and then we can divide that one for sure. While, no, while, you're, while, we're, while we're doing communion with the first group, we'll, we'll divide that this one up. Stand together and sing the doxology. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, according to whose most true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them boldness and fervent zeal constantly to preach the gospel to all nations, by which we have been brought out of darkness and error 
into clear light and true knowledge of you and of your Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Now you may stand, kneel, or sit as you are able for the Eucharistic prayer. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us, in obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament, be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us, all your saints, into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take in them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood of our
Jesus. Jesus said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Let us pray in thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand together. All our problems we send all our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. And all our hopes we set on the risen Christ. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. Y la bendición de Dios omnipotente, el Padre, el Hijo. El Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y more con ustedes eternamente. Amen. Let us sing to the Lord. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night has shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The light and the day are both alike. The light is the sight of the city of God. Shine in and the day. 
immediately, is this on? Yeah, it is. Immediately after uh, the service is concluded, uh, we'll be uh, confirmands and the bishop will come up and we'll have some pictures. And everybody else is going to get to go down the hall for the reception where there is chocolate and other things. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for the feast that is set before us as a foretaste of our heavenly feast. We thank you for the fellowship that will happen this day. And now, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my gosh. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do that again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. There we are. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.